Welcome to In Focus with Eden Lane. Hi, I'm Eden Lane. Thanks for joining us on In Focus. On this edition, we're bringing you to Fort Collins for our first formal visit to an arts organization right in the middle of town. It's called Ba Bleu, and it's more than just a theater company, and we'll get all the details from the founder of the company. We'll learn how they made a home for the arts in this historic Fort Collins landmark. I met co-founder and artistic director Wendy Ishii and co-director of the Reader's Theater, Jonathan Farwell, on stage at Ba Bleu. I'm awfully glad that this isn't my first visit here to Bob Blue in Fort Collins, but it's the first time we're able to bring the camera crew along with us to bring the show to visit you here. So I'm so glad we were able to make this happen today. Thank you very much. We are delighted to have you here. Thank yes, you. Yes, indeed. Let's talk about what this theater, gallery, arts organization is to begin with. Well, we, we started in 1992, kind of as a joke. Uh, we thought we'd last two years. Uh, we wanted to, uh, my original co-founder, Ava Wright and I, wanted to have a small, we called it a salon theater, mm -hmm. wanted to have a very small space where we could do uh, works of art, plays, and, and uh, that would stretch our imagination, recharge our batteries, give our audience a little more to think about on the way to the parking lot than where they parked the car. <laughs> so we wanted to be very, very tiny uh, so we could take some risks. Was it in this space when you no, started? No, no. We originally started at the Lincoln Center and we did a play called Duet for One uh, uh, by Tom Kempinski based on Jacqueline Dupre. And we got an incredible response, but we always knew that we wanted our own space to be able to do the kinds of plays that we wanted to do. Uh, we wanted it to be small, we wanted it to be intimate, we wanted to be able to take risks. Mm -hmm. And so we found a space also on Pine Street, but on the other side of the tracks. So you were always near the train. Yes, <laughs> always near the train, yes. That's a given. <laughs> That's a given. So it started as a lark um, uh, and a way to have some sort of outlet here in Fort Collins. So you didn't mm -hmm. have to drive all the way down to Denver or Boulder or anywhere else. Right, yeah. Exactly. So. How did it turn into this big organization that it is? Because it's not a lark anymore. No, it, it, w when we started, we had, we had a little 49-seat theater that we built in a storefront, and uh, we opened with a double bill of Samuel Beckett plays over there. And <laughs> the, the quote that I always tell is, my husband said to me when I said, oh, we figured out what we're opening with, Crops Last Tape and Happy Days, and Doug said, honey, how stupid are you? First, you name it Bableau so nobody can say it or knows what it what means. It means. <laughs> then you put it on Pine Street so nobody can find, find it. it. You have 49 seats so you have no hope of breaking even. And you're opening with Samuel Beckett that if people do know who he is, they hate him. <laughs> and mm. I said, we'll find out if the community wants us here. Well, clearly and they, they do. did. Yes. We extended that run. We have a huge international reputation for our Beckett work now. And over the Ten years that we were in the petite bleu, as we call it, uh, our audience really grew, and we found out that people loved uh, and responded well and would support the kinds of plays we were doing. Mm. And we eventually outgrew that little 49-seat theater, and then this incredible historic building, the Giddings Building, came available, and uh, we, through the the gracious goodwill of Tom Sutherland, mm. uh, we, he bought the building and started an LLC so we could do a capital campaign to buy it from him. And we, we, did, we began that campaign in 2004 and we renovated this from a, an industrial warehouse that made augers uh, into <laughs> a hundred seat theater and we opened with uh, both parts of Angels in America in 2004 up here at Port Collins. Right here in this space. And it is more than just the 100 seat theater. You have a space in your lobby that's a gallery and a community space. Mm -hmm. We have the Gallery mm -hmm. Bleu. The Gallery <laughs> Bleu. <laughs> and Gwen Hatchett, a marvelous ac uh, artist here in town, is our curator for the gallery. And 
So we have six shows a year, six exhibits, and we're part of the First Friday Gallery Walk, mm -hmm. and we have classes, and we have a, uh, an agreement, a lease agreement with the Downtown Development Authority, wherein we make the theater available for free to anyone in the community and beyond who wants to use it for, I can't remember, 100 and, 100 and some odd days or nights a year where anybody can come in and use use this space. For a lecture or For a lecture, any other a kind recital. Of mm -hmm. uh, there are three weeks a year that it's totally empty. We don't have a set on it and they could come in and do a full production if they wanted. And all those details are on our website. But it's a wonderful uh, way for us to give back to the community, for the DDA to support the theater and um, to broaden our audience and to share this incredible space. With, and be a good neighbor. And be a very good neighbor, yeah. One of the other programs that happen, occurs here is the Reader's Theater. Yes. And you and your co-director, your wife, have mm -hmm. been involved in that for eight years, is that correct? Uh, well, we've been here for eight years, and uh, we had been here less than a year when I suggested <laughs> that a Reader's Theater program would be a good idea. And what is a and, Reader's Theater program? Uh, basically, we, we assemble a, a, a cast of actors, uh, assign them roles, rehearse it three or four or five times, minimal production, no costumes, no sets, it's all left to the audience's imagination. We sit on stools or chairs, script in hand or on a music stand, mm -hmm. read the play to an audience. Now there are variations on this theme. Some, some directors really want their actors to move, to move around. around. So it could and be a staged reading can or be, just... can be closer to a staged reading, but traditionally, Reader's Theater is a process where the actors simply read the play to the audience. And <clears throat> for that in, with that in mind, the actors face the audience. And if I'm doing a scene with Wendy, I'm still talking this way. And I'm saying, Wendy, I love you. <laughs> I know <laughs> that, Jonathan. Yes, I love course. you too. <laughs> We've loved each other for all these years, in spite of my wife's jealousy. <laughs> and, <laughs> and my okay. husband's understanding. <laughs> now, the reason we're doing this is because Wendy and I met on a soap opera. <laughs> We can get into I was going to say, it sounded like a radio <laughs> <laughs> show. Well, the Reader's Theatre program, uh, in my mind, uh, I call it radio drama with close-ups. Oh. Because uh, the, we get this feedback from the audience all the time, that they love being able to see all the actors' faces all the time. So, you know, when actors turn to each other and, and talk mm -hmm. to each other this way, after a while it gets boring, you know. So... They're conditioned the, by film and yeah, television right. to <laughs> see both eyes at the same and, time. And <laughs> so the, the, the biggest challenge we have working with the actors is to persuade them that it really works for them to play to the audience. To the audience. So I just simply tell them, you're on camera close up and the camera is out there, not where she's sitting next to you. <laughs> and where do you and find the company of actors to pull from for the Reader's Theater? Well, uh, that's a come complex question because the, it differs. I'm good at those complex <laughs> questions. <Difficult. laughs> yes. Thanks for a difficult question. Uh, we, we have a talent pool locally here and uh, uh, they are uh, composed of actors who some perhaps have appeared in Bob Lee productions on the main stage which we call the full productions we do. Mm -hmm. um, and when we do Reader's Theatre by the way we only do three performances. But we do so three, like one weekend, maybe three performances two. of one play, a Sunday and Monday night and a following Saturday afternoon for those who want to not drive home at night. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been quite successful. And the casting pool uh, consists of anyone who answers the uh, email blasts that we put out saying we're casting a play. So it's not necessarily no. the cast of the current production no. like no. it would be no at a new play festival somewhere it's right. it could be completely separate it is right. completely it's completely separate, separate um, but once in a while we'll choose a play for readers theater that either is by the same playwright or in some other way complements the one that's ah. on the main stage and the audiences find that interesting and we, we try to select a broader range of material than perhaps has been chosen for the current season is that a way to try to take a temperature of your audience to see if they're interested in a full production? We sometimes transfer Reader's Theatre right. to our main stage production as we did with Trying. Yes, there's a, a, a wonderful play ago. called Trying and don't let me talk about it too much because I love the play. <laughs> but, and that was successful enough to warrant a f main stage production. Right. Yeah. 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 Has so, that happened before uh, with the Reader's Theatre? That's the only one we've actually transferred, yeah. isn't it? 
I think, I think it is. so. Yeah. I can't remember. It's hard to remember. We've been doing this for seven or eight years. <laughs> seven or eight yeah. years. Yeah. <laughs> Things tend to blur. It's also a way for us to people who have an interest in theater, but they're a little scared. They don't know if they can do it. They don't know what it's about. So it's a, it's a way to involve uh, new actors into the process. Yeah. So not just the audience, but the, the actors could be novice or Absolutely. apprentice exactly. actors. We yeah. encourage people who yeah. have not had theater experience to come and audition for us. Um, as the program has developed over the years, more and more we tend to want to try to catch or cast the best actors for the roles. Mm -hmm. uh, so we run into the situation where it's easier to do a two or three or four character play than a ten character play. Uh, and uh, easier to cast, so we run into these balance problems of, you know, we want to encourage. So the current production, uh, which is a play called Middletown by Will Eno. That's the Reader's a, Theater that's production. current Reader's Theater production. Mm -hmm. uh, the director, uh, Anne Whiteman, who's directing that for us, assembled a cast of 24 actors <laughs> because it's that kind of play. Mm. It's oh, an wow. homage to Thornton Wilder, Who's, who's Our Town was on our stage recently. Just this past yeah, fall. We right. It. Yeah. Uh, we, we had a main stage production of Our Town. And so, again, we chose uh, this play by Will Eno because it is sort of an homage to Our Town and to Thornton Wilder called Middletown. Uh, there the resemblance ends. It's a rather bizarre play and interesting. Um, but it is, the collected cast is the, the citizenship of a small town in Middle America as is the case with our town. What a poignant choice yeah. for a theater yeah. in Fort Collins, mm -hmm. right. uh, who you often cast actors who live near or in Fort Collins? Oh, we try to. Uh, and we also cast out of Denver. Well, in mm -hmm. fact, in our current show, uh, Tom Barillo is playing Chet, and he's from Denver. Denver. Mm -hmm. And when we opened with Angels in America, Leonard Barrett uh, came up and he played Belize. In fact, we had Nor Laura Norman was in that uh, production. I think we had four or five mm. actors from Denver, and they all. My husband's son built us a beautiful house out in Laporte, and it's the Bob Le guest artist house. <laughs> so every weekend we would have a slumber party out at my house, and Leonard would always make a Caesar salad when we would all go home at <laughs> night, and we'd sit up and, you know, have Caesar salad and and, and wine, and they would sleep upstairs in the <laughs> the bedrooms in the loft and. Yeah, with that many great. actors traveling to come up to mm -hmm. Fort Collins, it, because it's not that far, but it is if you're doing it for several shows in a weekend. Five right, weekends, right, yeah. Right. Um, that, that begs the question, this is a professional theater company, not a community theater company? Hmm. You know, we are a community theater. Um, we, we aspire to professional standards, and I think you know, certainly. We, we certainly achieve those on some some of the time, not all of the time, probably. Um, there are we're not an equity that house. Don't always uh, right. The <laughs> right. We are we are not a an equity house, although we do hire equity actors. So you have a, g equity guest contracts. Yes. So you are paying your actors very little. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're in a strategic plan right now, and one of the highest priorities that we have is to be able to restore even the modest stipends that we were paying prior mm -hmm. to 2008 when everything fell apart and yeah. we had to take those down to next to nothing just to keep something on the books. But it is a very high priority for uh, our board and our staff to restore those and increase those as soon as we're able. One of the things that was a challenge for us, which a lot of other theaters don't have, is we we started and succeeded in a $1.5 million capital campaign. We own this building. So mm -hmm. we are one of the only theaters in this area to own our own space. But that was, at, in some ways, having to sacrifice what we could put into productions mm -hmm. and stipends and salaries. But it also helps ensure that you were able to survive and weather the right. circumstances of 2008 to mm -hmm. now. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, that, that business of owning the building is something that's known in the trade as the edifice complex. <laughs> uh, and the, uh, and, and it's, it's, I don't have as much direct involvement with this, and I don't know as much about it as Wendy does, but I get the impression that, that part of the problem of owning a building is that the cost of keeping it open 
and turning the lights on and paying the utilities and taxes and all the things that go with owning property uh, do limit what you can put into other areas. Because you have to pay those costs even when you don't have a production running. Right. right. We don't have to pay taxes though. We are, when we succeeded in the, in the capital campaign and bought it from the LLC that Tom Sutherland had set up, we have tax exempt status and in fact we are an enterprise zone. We just became uh, uh, one of those in uh, 2011, I think. Yeah, yeah. And so th that's a wonderful thing for donors. They, can, they get a, a terrific tax credit. So and that's Fort helpful. Collins State as a community credit. is very supportive of having this place for the arts here mm -hmm. in their community. I know. I, if anybody had told me when my husband and I moved out here in 1985 that I would start a theater, uh, eventually move it to a larger venue, begin a $1.5 million capital campaign, and succeed, I was like, are you crazy? Are you <laughs> That's so <laughs> That's But this, this community has been incredibly supportive and embraced what we do and you know bought us this building. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we're here. We're and in turn you open your doors to the community so that they're they're involved in what's going on here. Yes. At the beginning of our conversation you alluded to your husband's um, teasing you about choosing the name of this <laughs> facility, this company, Bob Le. So of course we have to ask you, how did you come up with that name? Explain what it means and why it was important to you to choose such a colorful name. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bable started um, actually over two margaritas at the Rio Grande. As and so many things as do. So many, <laughs> so many things are conceived over margaritas at the Rio Grande. <laughs> <laughs> at least in this town, um, yes. <laughs> um, Ava Wright and I, she invited me to lunch to ask if she could direct me and duet for one. And as we talked about the kind of theater we wanted to do, she had come from Sweden and I would come from New York, and we wanted to do things that were a little different than what you'd normally think of as community theater. And in so what we, way? Uh, different in what way? Well, I love Neil Simon's plays. I think he's a wonderful writer and craftsman, but we enough other community theaters do that. Do, do that. that, and we, you know, well, as I said, we opened with Beckett. Uh, you know? So that tells us what you mean by yeah. something a little different. Right. Yeah. So as we were talking, and that was also why we wanted to be small, because when you're small, you can take risks. Mm -hmm. If you have a larger theater, you, you have to get butts in the seats all the time. And so we, we were drinking our margaritas and decided and found we liked the same kind of plays. And at one point, I looked at her and I said, Ava, it sounds like we're talking about starting a theater, and there's nothing in the world I would rather do less than that. And she just looked at me and said, why not? She and didn't for, believe you. <laughs> well, I couldn't remember. It was probably the tequila. And so we did it, and we decided, then we, we, we left the Rio, and we went around town, and we were pressing our nose. It was a rainy day. We were pressing our noses up against storefront windows looking for empty spaces. And the idea was to have 20 seats, and do plays that we could then have conversations about. And then the idea kind of started growing and eventually we talked about it being a salon theater and where people could come and have conversations and talk about art and politics and you know things going on in, in the community and it was this salon idea. And then we decided we had to come up with a name. And one day she came over to my house and I was mopping the kitchen floor and she was in the living room calling out names and then she said, Bas bleu. And I laughed and I said, that's funny, what does that mean? And she said, blue stocking. And I went, oh, that's it. Because the blue stockings in France and England in the 18, 17 and 1800s were these salons where these literary, uh, where, where these women were having literary men come and discuss art and politics and all the things that we had decided we wanted our little salon theater to do. So uh, I said, that's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. And it's even more perfect because this town is, uh, you know, was built because of the French trappers. And so what I love about it is the sort of bastardized French that goes on all the time. <laughs> when we moved out here, I told my agent in New York, I'm going to live on the Cache-le-Poudre River. <laughs> and then I came out here and it's the Poudre. 
you know. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so the mispronunciations and the fun pronunciations, you know, it just kind of fit. It, 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 you know, our tongues were pretty firmly planted in our cheeks when we chose it, but we only expected to last two years, you know. <laughs> so it was just and now a here joke. you are. <laughs> now I know that this organization um, has grown so large that you also have. Um, salons in the afternoons, so sometimes yes. for lunches yes. with talkbacks, and you have other educational programs. I wonder if you can briefly give us um, an idea of the scope of the other things that you do here at Bob. Well, Lewis. this last year we started uh, an improv troupe. It's called Comedy Brewers. One of our sponsors is the Fort Collins Brewery right down the street, and that's awfully convenient. I know <laughs> <laughs> they're wonderful. We have wonderful sponsors. Um, so we, we have the Comedy Brewers, and they are a tightly knit group of improv actors who also do uh, fully staged productions, so that kind of uh, stagecraft in them really heightens their improvisational skills mm -hmm. in a way that sometimes just stand-up comics uh, don't have. And they also have been very successful. They're only a year or so old, but they've been doing community events and benefits and uh, special performances. Uh, they, they perform here the second Sunday of every month, Sunday evening, and then they go out in the community. So that has been wonderful. And they also teach an improv class. Uh, we have sessions several times a year. Here in, at Bableau. Here at Bableau. But you have your own educational program. And programs. then we also have Sarah Zwick Tapley, who is somewhat new to Fort Collins, a couple of years uh, ago she moved here and just walked in and fell into my lap and I fell absolutely in love with her and just scarfed her up immediately. She has a phenomenal background as a director and actress. She um, runs, she's uh, head of our educational outreach program and she teaches acting classes and has just added a new class on auditioning and she also uh, at the university, she's, she's a colleague of mine at CSU as well, and Front Range uh, Community College, she teaches there, but she also teaches a wonderful course for scientists who need to learn performance skills. T to present their papers. To present their papers. <laughs> and uh, so we're very, very excited to have her as part of the Fort Collins community. And then, as I said, we have the gallery. And do those classes always occur here in this facility, or mm -hmm. you said it's outreach, do they sometimes occur elsewhere uh, on the, in the name of Bableau? Yes, sometimes we, we'll, we'll do a workshop in a school, you know, have one of our, our people go out and do that, or a business, you mm -hmm. know, that, that's, uh, or at CSU. So we try, to, um, we try to make it very accessible. We try to make this place... Uh, somewhere where people can come and not feel intimidated mm -hmm. and in fact Sarah's first class I was so excited I, I was auditing it and I saw the head of the uh, neurology department at Poudre Valley Hospital was in the class and I went because I know him personally and I was looking at the back of his head and I'm going hi and then he turned around <laughs> and, and he sent a wonderful wonderful note saying how valuable the, the class had been for him so we try to really engage the community and then Mm -hmm. And then hopefully that will lead to them maybe trying Reader's Theater out. And yeah. One of the things I am proudest of in, in the history of Bas Bleu is, before I left New York, I was working on a play called The Lesson from Allos by Ethel Fugard. In 2003, we mounted it, and Early Thomas, who uh, was a scientist at the university but also had been a uh, football player for the Jets and the Broncos. He played the, the uh, South African, the black South African role. And Tom Sutherland played my husband, he, the Afrikaner role, and I was the English wife. And they, neither of those gentlemen had ever been on stage before in their lives in a play. And it was one of the things that we, you could never do it in New York. You could never have Tom Sutherland and Early Thomas come and do a play and we worked on it for a year, and it was it changed their lives, it changed my life. I mean, it was one of the most gratifying experiences of my life to work on that play with these two gentlemen who were, you know, famous in their own right for other things. Other other things, things. But theater sort of brought us all together. And so we try to we try to sometimes bring people from the community 
into the theater and understand the process and what we do and that's been so that's why I say we're a community theater. I think that's a lovely way to um, express the sentiment of what the artists and community are trying to do here at Bob Le in Fort Collins and I'm so grateful that we had a chance to come and meet you for our first time with the cameras <laughs> and, and help as you said, spread the word about the work you're doing here, and I really appreciate you taking time for me this afternoon. Wow. We really appreciate you coming up, so thank you. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Babla is currently in rehearsal for their next production, Becky's New Car by Stephen Dietz. It opens on February 6th and plays through March 9th. What a pleasure to come up to Fort Collins in the River District to visit with Bob Le. And you can get more information by visiting their webpage. It's boble.org. And opening this week, a national tour of a recent Broadway revival of Evita visits the Buell Theater. What's new? Buenos Aires. I'm new. I want to say I'm just a little stuck on you. You'll be on me too. Evita is only here through the 26th. Details are available at denvercenter.org. The Arvada Center Winter Exhibition opens on January 23rd. Titled Collect, it will feature art from corporate, public, and private collections. The main gallery will focus on the stories and motivations behind corporate art collections in partnership with Nine.Arts. The upper gallery will highlight collections from Colorado institutions. And the theater gallery will tell the unique stories of the origins and passions behind five private collections. Artists featured in Collect include Vance Kirkland, Diego Rivera, Frank Stella, Andy Warhol, and many Colorado artists. And we'll bring you special interviews with these collectors from the opening night reception. Remember to join us on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for watching. Good night. Bug.